Well, the new head of the DOD, he put out a letter. His name is Miller. He's a former horse, horse soldier and special operations officer who was part of the first contingent of soldiers who entered Afghanistan in 2001. He was pulled from his job as the National Counter Counterterrorism Center to serve as the acting secretary of defense. Well, he had a pretty strong two page memo that he sent out to the en entire Department of Defense, where he basically says that we're going to pull out of Afghanistan. He says, quote, as we prepare for the future, we remain committed to finishing the war that Al Qaeda brought to our shores in 2001. This war isn't over. We are on the verge of defeating Al Qaeda and its associates, but we must avoid past strategic error and failing to see the fight through the finish. Indeed, this has been a fight that has been long. Our sacrifices have been enormous, and many are wary of from war. I am one of them. But this is a critical phase in which we transition our efforts from a leadership to a supporting role. And he goes on and on and talks about the reasons why we are leaving um, Afghanistan. First of all, do you think this is going to just be an empty type of yes. letter? Or I do mean, you think Trump will really pressure the DOD to leave it before he leaves office? No, I don't think so. I think we'll still be there. And I think that and different iterations of this same letter have been written over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over for the last decade or so. Mm -hmm. um, and because like it says, uh, the, the the memos didn't really have a plan, didn't really say how. It was just like, here's what we're going to do. Like, we've just been hearing this forever. It doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, I think yeah. this one's a little more concise in the way that it's written with a very particular goal. He says, we're not a people of perpetual war. It is the antithesis of everything for which we stand and for which our ancestors fought for. All wars must end. Ending wars requires compromise and partnership. We must meet this challenge. We gave it our all. Now it's time to come home. I don't think from that high of a level of person that we've heard those type of words yet. Yeah. Yeah. No. So that's where I think there, there is a difference. So I think there's an outside chance it could still happen. Um, I, I think it goes to show, I mean, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but he's the first secretary of defense who actually fought in this um, conflict. So he comes from it from a different perspective. So I hope maybe people look at it from that regard and say, all right, this guy's actually been there. He's been on the ground. He knows what it's like. Maybe I'm putting a little much too much faith in this guy, but I hope maybe he's right. And I hope maybe even if he gets removed, uh, you know, when uh, things change over that they continue to move forward with this action to get us out of there. Well, Mattis would definitely qualify as somebody who's fought. Oh yeah. Sorry. All right. Well, no, so I, just, I couldn't think. So I couldn't think. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Mattis. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, you definitely. I only host, a, you know, I only co-host a, a military podcast. What do I know? Yeah, uh, why would I know that? Have known that. But I, I think that this is hopefully a little bit different. What I can't stand is this current argument now. Like, well, Trump wanted to leave the entire time. If that is true, you say leave. Like that's what I don't get about how people think that the DOD works. If the president says no. We are coming the fuck home. You're there on his authorization anyways. Yeah. Like you're there on the president's authorization. He could tell you be out in two weeks and you have to fucking do it. It's not an option. Figure it out. Yeah. Like you have to do it. Yeah. But you know what? Anytime someone says that, like, oh, we should leave. Immediately, immediately. The word that you always hear is vacuum, vacuum. We can't leave a vacuum. I'm sick and tired of hearing about this gosh darn Hoover, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's historic. Oh, all right. My bad. My no. bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but no, this you know, it could suck up a bowling ball if it wanted uh -huh. to. It would be nice to leave a, a Dyson because even in like the rockiest terrain, that big ball can make it like an overturns. That's mm -hmm. what they really should have made the MRAP after the Dyson vacuum. Like if you want to talk about the ability to go, why haven't we seen a tank type vehicle with the big ball in the back? That's Chaps, I was wondering the same. If there's anything we come to in this round, that's I hope it's that. <laughs> yeah. No, but right, like we've been we've been saying this for how long? We've been doing this song and dance for how long now? There has to be an answer out there. There has no, to be. There's not. <laughs> it's definitely not. Okay. An keep I mean, that's dying. why I, I don't I hope like you two it. being if, negative. If you want to oh, have like big fuck you to terrible. the establishment, make everybody come home. Be like, I don't get them here right now. Just make yeah. it happen. Mm -hmm. They got to do it. It's not like it'd be an option. Like if the president told them to do it, they have to do it. I agree. So why don't you just He's, say that? Well, what? Well, okay, but what if the troops like you're not our dad? 
Yeah. Think about that. That's true. I didn't think about that. If they say so, you're not a real dad, that's, that's a right. tough that's, one to come exactly. back from. Exactly. That's an airtight response. 